We're now on the scope of tonight's operation. What we know so far, I want to go to scene as uh, Alex Marquardt. So let's talk about the strikes. What do we know about the targets? Well, Anderson, uh, the, the, the importance of the Red Sea cannot be denied. Uh, you have 15% of the global seaborne trade uh, that, that passes through here. And if you look down here, this is the Bab el Mandeb Strait, uh, which is an absolutely critical narrow area that ships go through into the Red Sea and then up uh, to the Suez Canal. Uh, there were more than a dozen strikes uh, across Yemen from north to south, uh, across a variety of, of targets. Uh, we're learning more and more by the minute, really, of what these, uh, these targets were. But they were at least in, in five different locations, if not more, uh, in and around the capital of Sana'a, over here on the western coast of uh, Yemen in uh, Al Hudaida, and then in several other locations uh, up and down uh, the this north-south axis in Yemen. Now we are hearing from both the coalition that carried out these strikes, as well as the Houthis. Uh, the Houthis have said that a number of air bases uh, and airports were hit, along with uh, several camps. They mentioned the 22nd Brigade Camp in the uh, Taiza district, which is down south. This is what we're learning from this coalition, which, uh, of course, the, the U.S. was really leading in terms of uh, the assets that were brought to bear. They hit radar systems, they hit drone storage and launch sites, as Oren touched on. Uh, the drones have been absolutely uh, a critical part of those attacks that the Houthis have been carrying out, ballistic and cruise missile uh, storage and launch sites. And then in terms of uh, what assets were used, this is just uh, what the U.S. used in tonight's series of strikes. We also know uh, that the RAF, the British Air Force, as well as a British destroyer, uh, they have been out there. Uh, but the USS Eisenhower strike group has been basically been out in the Red Sea, uh, serving as a deterrent to Iran and other countries. Uh, the U.S. trying to send a message to not widen this conflict with that very formidable strike group. Uh, but fighter jets, U.S. fighter jets, were used to carry out tonight strikes uh, along with uh, ships. We don't know exactly which ones yet, but we do have the name of the submarine that was used. This is a guided missile submarine called the USS Florida. Very notable that the U.S. military is telling us tonight the name of the submarine. And they, both the surface ships and the, tom and, and, uh, the submarine, fired these uh, land missiles. Uh, these are essentially surface-to-surface -surface missiles, Tomahawk uh, missiles against this more than a dozen uh, locations inside Yemen. So a, f a formidable amount of force brought to bear tonight in these strikes all across Yemen, Anderson. And obviously we don't know if this is the end of these strikes or if this will be an ongoing operation. Do, let's, let's talk more about the, what's behind the U.S. decision to launch the strikes now. Well, quite simply, uh, as I think MJ was just, just saying, this was the, the strikes that we saw, or the attempted attacks by Yemen uh, just two days ago on Tuesday, the biggest yet involving drones, ballistic, and cruise missiles, was essentially a straw that broke the camel's back. There had been repeated warnings uh, by the U.S. and others to the Houthis uh, to essentially knock it off. We have seen uh, the U.S. carry out responses against Iranian-backed militant groups in Iraq and Syria. We had not yet seen any kind of U.S. response uh, against the Houthis in Yemen, and that is in large part because they do threaten uh, this waterway. But essentially, having choked this off, the U.S. now trying to send the message to the Houthis uh, that they need to back down. They're essentially trying to punch them in the nose, bloody them, uh, and get them to stop. Whether that will work, Anderson, is now the major question. Of course, the big uh, foe here in the region is Iran. They back forces in Yemen, in Iraq and Syria, uh, in Lebanon with Hezbollah, of course, and then Hamas in Gaza. So, as Oren was saying, the Houthis have vowed to respond. Uh, so it remains to be seen uh, whether there will be some kind of escalation here or whether the U.S. and these other countries have sent the message uh, that they are intending to send tonight. This is absolutely critical, not just in terms of the potential for a widening war, but for global commerce, because of the amount of shipping that goes through here, now you have ships being forced uh, to not go through the Red Sea, instead go south around the Cape of Good Hope in Africa, uh, which makes things a lot more complicated, a lot more expensive. Yeah. We should point out uh, a senior member of the Houthis, uh, Abdul Salam Jahaf, uh, made a statement on Thursday warning, quote, we will confront America, make it kneel down, burn its battleships and all its bases and everyone who cooperates with it, no matter the cost. He went on to say we will tread on America with our feet. Um, Remains to be seen what, if any, response they may have to this latest attack. Just moments ago, CNN's Manu Raju got a statement 
supporting the strikes from Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. It reads in part, and I quote, President Biden's decision to use military force against these Iranian proxies is overdue. The United States and our allies must leave no room to doubt that the days of unanswered terrorist aggression are over. Joining us now, two former NATO Supreme Allied Commanders, retired Army General Wesley Clark and retired Air Force General Philip Breedlove. With us as well from Israel, CNN International Diplomatic Editor Nick Roberts. And General Clark, let me start with you. I'm wondering what your reaction is to news of these strikes. What do you make of what we've seen so far? Well, I think it's, it's a good first step. Uh, I think it could have happened sooner. I'm glad we have a coalition. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you're dealing with something like this, Anderson, you don't want to have to do this in the first place. But when you do, you must attain escalation dominance. So uh, I didn't see anything in the reports about taking out the boats. So they're boats. They've been used to try to attack uh, shipping. We should take out the boats, take out every means that the Houthis have to get at these uh, shipping areas, wherever, the, wherever the, the minefields are, the mines are stationed. Now, the Iranians pulled their destroyer back, so, so they're trying to run from this. Uh, and that's the next step is to do something with Iran. But for now, it's on the Houthis. And so uh, they either stop or we uh, will have to escalate what we're doing. It's all a matter of getting the targeting. The intelligence is so critical. We can strike anything in there and probably hit it if we know what we're after. So I'm sure we've been preparing this strike package for a while, but we're going to have to probably go back again and harder and they're going to, it's a game, and they're learning from our strike. They're figuring out what we know. So um, it, 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 this is just the beginning of this, unfortunately. General Breedlove, do you have a sense of how sophisticated the Houthis are in terms of the, the, the weaponry that, that they have at their disposal? Well, remember that all roads in the Middle East lead back to Iran. So they are being fed capabilities that are beyond what they have would have created in their in their country. And this is what this is all about. We have a strategic defensive issue. We have lost what uh, deterrence we've had in this area, 130 strikes against our people, 27 against international shipping, one boat being held. And so our deterrence has to be regained and we've lost the initiative. We are now uh, reactive rather than proactive. And I think this is the first step to begin to be proactive and try to reestablish deterrence, much like Wes and others just talked about. We have to make Iran and all of their proxies understand that they will have to pay a cost for the things they're doing. It's a little slow in coming, but now maybe we will begin to regain that initiative and reestablish the deterrence that we once held in this area. So, General Breedlove, in terms of the Houthis, what does that look like? I mean, uh, General Clark had talked about uh, going after mines, after boats that they have access to. Uh, I mean, how many other kind of targets do you think there are? How long could this go on for? Well, I think there are many yet to be struck. We heard today that they were moving some of their best kit into bunkers that were built for a different part of a different war. And so they know we're coming after them. And the good news is, I think we demonstrated to them today that we have good intelligence of where they are because we did strike valued targets today. And I think we just have to increase the cost, as Wes mentioned, increase the cost so that they know this is not going to be a profitable venture. 